Uh, welcome. I'm Stan Van Gilder with George Power, and uh, I'd like to talk with you a little bit about what we're doing in economic development in GIS, tell you a little bit about what's going on with us in economic development. First of all, why are we doing economic development at all? A lot of people are surprised that George Power is in the economic development business. Um, we set our goals around capital investment. We figure if companies are coming to this state and opening manufacturing plants and those kind of things, they're going to create wealth in the state. They're going to stay here. It's going to be good for the economy of the state as a whole. So capital investment is one of our goals, one of our success metrics. We also measure success in terms of jobs. And to just kind of give you a, a data point, uh, last year our projects attracted over 15,000 jobs to the state of Georgia 2007, and we did about $2 billion in capital investment. And those are just the projects that the Georgia Power project managers worked. And overall, uh, the ultimate goal, of course, is to create wealth. Uh, long term, and I need to mention that Georgia Power has been doing economic development longer than any other agency. We've been actually in the game for over 80 years. We don't charge anything for any of our services. We don't charge our communities for representing them. We don't charge the companies for showing them around and, and doing those things. But long term, our 80-year history shows that it is good for the company to do economic development. It's also good for all businesses within the state of Georgia. So that's really why we're doing it. Um, I'll shift a, a little bit to some of the things we're doing and some of the tools. Again, this is just kind of a real high-level look. We're using Esri's business analysts for mapping and reporting of demographic data. We're doing drive time analysis, ranking markets, and doing routing. An example of this would be a company that's looking to locate to the state, and they're concerned about traffic. Am I going to be able to get my employees to or from my plant or the truck driving routes? Some of those things. Uh, this is an example of business analysts and how we might do that with drive times and custom mapping and, and some of those things. In terms of sites, and what I mean by sites is developable land. This is a company, the Kia plant that located near Columbus is a big deal. Everybody heard about in 2006. That was one of our projects. And um, that kind of threw, we kind of threw the rule book out the window with that one. But in general, we would have had... Uh, land available, and we would have cataloged that and said this is one of the sites that's available for development. And with those sites, we edit and maintain a site database of about 670 uh, developable sites. Our civil engineers do that function. We maintain those boundaries and those attributes. We develop custom site plans, custom maps, and do spatial analysis to help these companies figure out where's the best location in the state to locate. And we're using ArcMap and uh, some of those ArcGIS products to do that. This is an example of editing a site boundary or some of the data points of a particular site out of that 670. We've designed over, I guess, about 600 industrial parks since the civil engineering function was implemented in the mid-60s. So this is an example of a, of a site le or a park layout that, that our civil engineers might do and how that would look. We have an ArcSDE database. Um, Probably one of the biggest news for us is we launched a product that I'll talk about in just a second called Select Georgia a few years ago, and that's where GIS really took off for us uh, in just the last couple of years. So we really, although we've been doing economic development for 80 years, we really feel like the GIS piece of it is relatively new to us. We maintain that GIS database for the Select Georgia application and also for our civil engineers. Uh, we have FME scripts to update the database. Uh, we've just hired a new full-time GIS administrator, Jeff DeWitt, who's brought this FME capability to us, and he's automating a lot of our processes for updates and proximity calculations, you know, find me the nearest universities, all those kinds of things for a particular site. Uh, this is an example of what that would look like. There are, I don't know how many, zillions of fields within our database. Um, it's, it's quite large and extensive and uh, pretty complicated, all the interconnections that happens between all the various tables. In terms of project support, and in terms of what I mean by a project is the Kia plant would be an example of a project. That is a company that's looking to locate to Georgia. We want to attract that industry, have them land here in Georgia, and reap that benefit. What we would do with that? We do an analysis to determine whether a site or building they're looking at is suitable for their particular project. Most of them would like to find an existing building. If there's not an existing building, then we'd like to find them some land that they could develop. We do custom mapping for that purpose. Uh, this is an example. We've got a lot of uh, real push lately in, in the area of data centers. We've located a lot of data centers over the last couple of years. This is an example of using ArcGIS, uh, do some high rely circuits and some of the things that are important to the data center industry and how we would overlay those layers to find a place suitable for data centers. And then again, this is custom mapping that we would do for project support. We would lay, show the prospect to, to demonstrate whatever it is the drivers for those particular projects. Uh, in terms of uh, trends and evolution, 
just things that we have noticed over the years. Uh, not too long ago, we were doing custom programming. We're moving more toward an off-the-shelf type of approach. We're really redefining the terms economic development and GIS. Everyone's starting to use MapPoint, Google Earth, some of those kind of things. So that term GIS, which used to be limited to a very small group of people, has now become more mainstream. Uh, consolidating to web platform, company standard architecture. That seems like a, maybe an obvious thing, but this is allowing our IT group to really take over a lot of the maintenance that we used to have to provide in our group, which is letting us be more efficient. Uh, we're lowering the complexity of our services while raising the proficiency of our department, which is taking the technology to the masses and letting them uh, take advantage of it. Advances in 3D visualization and share GIS data across the company. And now since Danielle contacted me, I put state on there. So uh, I'd like to share GIS resources a little more broadly. Also, subscription-based services are pretty new. The ArcGIS Online product, Virtual Earth. Some state resources that we use. I was asked to include that. Won't read all these to you. These are the ones that we're currently using. Uh, these are the ones that we would like to have. They may be available. Maybe we don't know yet. We'll see. Um, this is the Select Georgia project. This is uh, using Microsoft's Virtual Earth as a background. We do a site search for 2,500 acres. We locate two sites. The system automatically zooms to those sites. Uh, we'll go in and do an analysis of a particular site. I've got a bunch of layers turned on. It's kind of a messy picture, but it just gives you an idea. We've got wetlands indicated here, as well as there's a 500 kV transmission line running through there, some of the things that utility company keeps up with. As we see the future state, do what we do best, outsource the rest. Well, what exactly is it that we do best? We're <coughs> redefining that continuously, which is pretty exciting. The GIS resources residing within the logical owners throughout the company. Uh, Danielle's huge uh, initiative here statewide, uh, it's a challenge doing it within our own company. There are GIS layers to different departments that don't talk to each other within the company. We want to break down those barriers. Also, decision support models built through interconnections and synthesis of statistical data. That is the geekiest statement I think I've ever heard in my life. Uh, what I really mean by that is Instead of just saying, I found these sites that meet your criteria, ranking by order of relevance. In other words, doing some modeling and things with Model Builder and Esri products, things like that. This is where we really see ourselves going with that. And then again, extensive use of 3D visualization. And that's it. Yes. Thank you.